Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How's everybody doing this evening? Good. Good. Bless. It's, great. it's great to be saved. Amen. Amen. Well, it was a real blessing uh, today. I got a delicious uh, breakfast, King James Bible breakfast from uh, <laughs> Pastor Lucas's wife, uh, Debbie Lucas. It was delicious pancakes and delicious bacon, drink to go along with it. And and after, then, right before coming to church, I had the King James Bible at dinner. <laughs> I did a supper over at uh, Brother James Lucas and his wife, uh, Becky Lucas's uh, house. And uh, i just been blessed all day today. Amen. Amen. You know, and uh, I just want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for that. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God, the Christ Jesus concerning you. And... Um, I'm just so blessed, like uh, Pastor Lucas said. I want to read that verse. That's one of my favorite verses. He quoted Psalm 68, 19. If you don't mind taking your King James Bibles and turn to that verse. We are so blessed as saved, born-again Christians, Bible believers, King James Bible believers. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ and praise His Word. Praise the King James Bible. But here in uh, Psalm... Chapter 68, verse 19, the King James Bible says, Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Selah. That is so true. He daily loadeth us with benefits. Amen. And we can't even count all our blessings. That's, That's how right. many are. Amen. Amen. They're innumerable. Amen. And uh, there's another verse that goes along with that. I like to meditate on those verses you know, frequent, often. I believe it's in Psalm 116. Let me just uh, double check. Shame on me, I should have it memorized. But, um, yes, it's in Psalm 116. If you don't mind, please take your King James Bibles and turn to Psalm 116, verse number 12. This is another great verse. It's actually a question. It's one of the greatest questions in all the King James Bible. King James Bible says in Psalm 116, verse 12, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? Yeah. Right. Wow, that is such a great question. Amen. Amen. I mean, serving the Lord Jesus Christ, the benefits in this life, the next life, are out of this world. Right. I mean, we have the best retirement policy in the world, Amen. you know. We have eternal life insurance. Amen. We have lasting life insurance. Amen. We have soul insurance. We have fire insurance. Right. Our soul is saved from hell. Amen. Our soul is saved from hellfire. Yes. You know, we're, we're hell proof. Amen. You know, we're fire proof. But um, tonight I want to, you know, preach and uh, talk about and, and about my favorite thing to talk about after the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's the King James Bible. Amen. That's why we named our church in New York City, King James Bible Baptist Church. Amen. You know, when I was first starting a church and thinking about a name for the church, that's the name that came to me after reading Psalm 138, verse 2. We'll look at that in a minute. But um, I had called up this other King James only Bible, you know, believing Baptist pastor, and I asked him what he thought about me naming the church that, because he doesn't... Uh, use that name. He goes by the name Bible Baptist Church, yeah. which a lot of great King James, only Bible being Baptist Church, just have Bible Baptist Church. So he thought it really wasn't wise of me to, you know, say King James Bible Baptist Church. He said, if anything, I should just call it Bible Baptist Church. But I wanted to let everyone know where we stood Amen. when it came to the Bible issue. You know? Amen. So, um, <clears throat> Basically, if anybody's looking for a King James only Bible being Baptist church in New York City, you know, and they see the name of our church, they should know what we believe. Right. It shouldn't be hard for them to find it. Right. And um, I believe the Lord's blessed our church for that. And um, 
you know, because of the name of our church, we, you know, we've, we've met a lot of great brethren, a lot of great, you know, brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ who love the Lord Jesus Christ and who love the book, who love the King James Bible, and um, just been so blessed, you know, spiritually speaking, and uh, we don't have our own, you know, church building, you know, we don't have our own place to meet, and we don't have our own storefront church. Right now we're meeting in my apartment. But like the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And it is biblical, you know, the church in my house, it is biblical to have a church in your house. But I'm hoping and praying the Lord, you know, give the increase and we can eventually get our own church building or a storefront church. Because um, right now, you know, we have a storage thing that we rent to keep, you know, our tables and tracks and signs and banners and you know, pulpit and, you know, Bibles and John and Romans and chick tracks and penny tracks and Spanish tracks and foreign language tracks and, you know, uh, chairs and it's, you know, it would be nice if, you know, we had a storefront church at the very least or our own church building. So pray for us about that, you know. I've never really done debutation to try to raise support, you know, for our church or for ministry for myself, my wife, my family. But it's something that, you know, I wouldn't mind doing if it would help us raise the necessary support that uh, we need. Um, New York City, you need a lot of support to have your own Amen. church building, have your own storefront church, but God is able. Amen. 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 You know, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the hills too. And our God's not broke. The Bible says in Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your need, who enriches in glory by Christ Jesus. So I'd rather have the vision and not have the provision than have the provision and have the vision. And like Dr. Ruckman says, the way to do a great work for the Lord Jesus Christ on this earth is to have the vision of souls dying and going to hell and couple with someone's got the provision, yes, the money, the you know, the shekels, you know, the <laughs> you know, the finances. But um, I'm just so blessed to be saved, to be born again, to be born. I don't deserve to be saved. I don't deserve to go to heaven. None of us do. Right. It's only by the grace of God. Praise like, the Lord. The Bible says in you know Romans 5:20. You know, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And, you know, one of my favorite verses, I'll turn there if you don't mind. I always say it with my favorite verse. i got hundreds of favorite verses, thousands of favorite <laughs> verses. But uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. You know, when the Lord Jesus Christ saved Saul of Tarsus, who later became Paul the Apostle, the Apostle Paul, that was one of the greatest conversions in history. I mean, you think about it. You know, the life that Saul of Tarsus lived before he was Paul the Apostle, before he was Apostle Paul. You know, if we were living back then, and before Paul was, you know, regenerated, as it point, when he was an unregenerate man, an unregenerate sinner, he would have, you know, basically consented to our death. Yeah. He would have came into this church and held us, he held not just us men, but the women, you know, into prison. And, you know, he would have uh, made sure that what we believed about the Lord Jesus Christ, that it would have been, ex you know, exterminated. It would have been annihilated, you know, obliterated. We wouldn't have even existed anymore. We, we would have been, you know, dead. Of course, our soul would be asking for the body and present with the Lord Jesus Christ. But, you know, what a, what a testimony that, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ died. <coughs> Saul off his high horse and saved him on the road to Damascus. And um, what a change, you know, in, in Saul's life who later became Paul. And um, this verse, it has so much meaning to me because even though I didn't, you know, kill Christians or murder Christians, you know, but I murdered Jesus. I killed Jesus. My sins, our sins, your sins, put Jesus, you know, on the cross, you know, nailed him to the cross. So we're all a bunch of murderers, all a bunch of killers, you know, before we came to Christ. And even now, if you hate your brother in your heart, the Bible says that you're a murderer, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of times Christians, um, they, they have hatred in their heart for their brethren, you know, for whatever reason. They have unforgiving spirit or bitterness. And, you know, that's why a lot of our prayers, you know, your prayers get hindered. Because the Bible says in Psalm 66, 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So with the Lord, you always got to deal with the sin. You always got to deal with the sin in your heart, in your life, in your mind, so that, you know, you can get your, be in fellowship with the Lord and get your, your prayers answered. But here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, the Apostle Paul says, 
I'm running on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. He says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Amen. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. And um, we know that's true because He gave us more than half of the New Testament. You know, and it's amazing uh, how the Lord used the Apostle Paul, you know, to give us, like I said, the Pauline epistles and just his, his, his pattern of life, his example. You know, he, he was an amazing uh, apostle. He was an amazing uh, convert of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wanted to prove to everybody, he wanted to show everybody that he was a changed man, he was a saved man. And he wanted to turn the world literally upside down for the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, so like like Jason did in the book of Acts. Go there real quick. Go to Acts, uh, Acts chapter seventeen. Acts chapter seventeen. You know, we ought to want to do the same thing. We ought to want to do what Brother Jason here did, and what the Apostle Paul did, and what other brethren did in the, in the Scriptures, in the Holy Scriptures. Here in Acts chapter seventeen, verse six, the King James Bible says. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Now that's a great testimony to have, you know? Yeah. You know, wouldn't it be great if uh, the word got out that, you know, bolt, you know, fundamental Baptist church here in uh, West Virginia, this you know small King James only Bible Baptist is turning the world upside down literally, right? It, it can happen, brethren. I try. Yes. You know, you just gotta get on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ, on fire for the Word of God, on fire for the King James Bible, on fire for souls, on fire for lost souls, and you know have a burden for lost souls. And you know we have the same spirit that raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. We have the same spirit that the Apostle Paul had. We have the same spirit. You know, that, you know, Brother Jason had here. So, it's possible. With men, things are impossible. With God, all things are possible. Right. Amen. And, you know, Jesus says, have faith in God. You know, I love what, uh, you know, William Carey, great missionary, said. He said, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. And I love what missionary C.T. Studd said. He said, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Amen. Uh, and, you know... You gotta have a vision, brethren. You know, because that's how where it starts. And um, the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. You know, if it's His will, if it lines up with His word, perfect word of King James, on His perfect, His perfect will. And the Bible says in Psalm thirty-seven, four, "Delight thyself also in the Lord, and He shall give thee the desires of thy heart." But um, tonight, I want to title this uh, this sermon, this message. Praise the King James Bible. That's what I call Amen. this message. Take your King James Bibles and go to Psalm chapter 56, verse number 4. Could I have one of these waters up here? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. The rich man held which well, you know, one drop it out. I want to just thank God for saving me. Hey, bad brother. Praise the Lord Jesus. And hey, I thank him for all that he does for me. Yeah. I can turn it. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not a day goes by. Now I don't thank him. And I praise the day that I got saved. Praise Amen. Praise Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> I thank Him for having brought me through all my trials and tribulations. And I thank Him <clears throat> for just having Pastor Jim and Brother Danny Worley Amen. come to my house. Praise when I was 68 years old. Amen. And invited me and my 
invited me and my family to church here. And I told them, I said, well, I said, we'll think about it. I'm Catholic, you know, and that's why I used to throw everybody off. I just asked Catholic, you know, just leave, you know. But I just started, me and wife kept talking and talking. She would say, I wouldn't. And we just kept talking and talking. And then my daughter and grandson was murdered by, their, by her husband. And then he killed herself. And that just... You broke my heart. But I thank God she was saved. Amen. And I hope my grandson was. I, I don't really know for sure. But knowing that if I got saved, I'd see her again. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I decided, I told the wife, I said, well, let's go up that church and see what it's like. That was two years later. Well, Jim and Danny were planted that seed there. It started budding about a year and a half afterwards, but two years later, it did bloom. And I thank God every day for it. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, what a great testimony. The Bible says, let the redeemed the Lord say so. And they have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. Really appreciate you giving your testimony, bro, Chuck. It really means a lot to me, bro. When I go back to New York, we'll be praying for it. How our church pray for you as well. Praise God, praise the Lord, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, and praise His Word, the King James Bible. Okay, we're in Psalm chapter 56, and let's look at two, two verses in this chapter. We're going to look at verse number 4 and verse number 10. The King James Bible says in Psalm chapter 56, verse 4, In God I will praise His Word, in God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Look down in verse number 10. Psalm 56, verse 10, the King James Bible says, In God will I praise His word, in the Lord will I praise His word. Yeah. So look at how many times uh, King David here is saying that he's going to praise the word. Right. In verse 4, he says, In God I will praise His word. That's once, right? Then look at verse number 10. He says again, In God will I praise His word. That's the second time. Then the third time he says, in the Lord will I praise his word. So here you have King David praising the written word. He's not praising the living word, the Lord Jesus Christ, but here he's praising the written word, you know, written word of God. So that's why I titled, you know, tonight's sermon, tonight's message, Praise the King James Bible, because I praise the living word, the Lord Jesus Christ, right. but also praise his written word, the King James Bible, because it's... It's, it's found in the scriptures where, you know, David, King David, after God's own heart, did the same. So why shouldn't we do the same? And um, let's turn our, our King James Bible, let's turn to King to Psalm 138, verse number 2. This is the verse the Lord gave me to name our church in New York City, King James Bible Baptist Church. And this verse, a lot of even professing King James Bible believers have a hard time believing, have a hard time accepting and um, what I like to do a lot of times when I meet like new Christians, new, new believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, new brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, especially you know, new brothers in the Lord, I like to say, you know, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And usually there's a good response when I say that, you know, because the Bible says, you know, I am shopping the I am, so a man shall I count for his friend. And, you know, for two or three gallons, how many did my midst of them? Two are better than one because they reward for their labor. You know, every Christian ought to, you know, rejoice when the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ is being praised. Yes, and then when I say praise the King James Bible, 
that's what kind of like separates, you know, like the, sometimes the men from the boys, or you know, because people they they, they get taken back by that. They're not used to somebody saying that. Right. And right. What really shocks me <clears throat> is when somebody saying people are, are claim to love this King James Bible, claim to love the Word of God, the written Word of God, and. Um, you know, maybe they're taken back by it. Maybe they, they find it a little odd or strange. Or I, I, I have been told I'm very eccentric. I'm a very eccentric person, you know. And um, I am. I have a lot of uh, idiosyncrasies, whatever if I said that right, you know. And um, I am a very strange, you know, bird, I guess you can say, you know. <laughs> but doesn't the Bible say we're peculiar people? Amen. You know? And, uh, you know. I'm just so happy to be saved. I'm so happy to have the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why those songs that Brother Jonathan just sung up here were such a blessing to my soul. God bless you, brother. Your church, you know. It's really encouraging you know, to see a man, you know, who loves the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not a shame to sing for the glory of God. And the um, Bible says psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That's right. But here in uh, Psalm 138, verse number 2, the King James Bible says... I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So according to this verse found in our King James Bible, there's something that the Lord magnified even above his name. You know, and that's his written word. That's Amen. the Holy Scriptures. That's the King James Bible. So tonight, like I said, I want to praise the Holy Scriptures. I want to praise the Holy Word of God. I want to praise the written Word of God. I want to praise the King James Bible. But I want to give you some uh, experiences I've had when it comes to uh, not only earnestly contending for the faith and once delivered to the saints, you know, the gospel, but earnestly contending for the King James Bible, for this book, because, you know, there are so many people, even so-called independent fundamentalist Baptist pastors, even so-called independent fundamentalist Baptist preachers, who really don't love this King James Bible like they claim to love it. That's and right. um, I might be dropping a few names, you know, um, you know, tonight, this evening, but uh, I just want to tell you my experience. There's a church in uh, Brooklyn, New York. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, originally. And uh, there's a church, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it, called Bethel Baptist Fellowship. Anybody ever hear of it? Brooklyn, New York. Well, anyway, uh, the pastor's name is uh, Jim Bickle. And uh, he went to Bob Jones University. I'm sure some of you have heard of Bob Jones University. Well, that's where, you know, Dr. Ruckman, you know, went to school. He also went to Bob Jones University. And um, this pastor, uh, Jim Bickle, hates Dr. Ruckman. He hates Dr. Ruckman's guts. And uh, what happened was, um, you know, I used to live in Sheepshead Bay, uh, Brooklyn. And um, what happened was there really wasn't any other church, like in the area, that, you know, even used the King James Bible, let alone believed it. And there were so, a couple of good brothers that went to that church. There's one great brother in the Lord, our Facebook friends with, uh, David uh, Ruckos, and a couple of other, you know, good brothers in the Lord. I'm not, I'm, I don't think he's on Facebook, Brother Steve McNulty. But anyway, um, you know, I, I would go there, you know, sometimes just to have fellowship, because, you know what I'm saying, uh, the Christian life, it gets very lonely sometimes. Yes. Sometimes just you, the Lord, and the Bible. Yes. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with fellowship and with another saved brother or sister in the Lord Jesus Christ, even if they're not 100% a King James Bible like the way we are, because, you know, at least they're saved. They're trusting in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're trusting in salvation by grace through faith. They believe in eternal security. Once saved, always saved. So anyway, uh, you know, I, I, and also, they actually gave out good gospel tracts, to be honest with you. They gave out chick tracts. They gave out the God's simple plan of salvation tracts. And uh, I like that they were... They were soul conscious, you know, they, you know, they believed in evangelism, stuff like that. And the pastor himself was a Jewish, you know, believer, you know, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyway, make a long story short, I used to, I didn't, I didn't dress up like this, and I would wear my Jesus clothing and stuff like that. And um, what happened was, uh, I, would, I used to have this Jesus jacket, and on the front of the jacket, it said, it had a cross, it said, Jesus paid it all. And then it had Christ died for our sins on the other side. And on the back it had the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection. 
And um, I had one thing on there about the King James Bible. Only one thing. I had like three things about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So one day, um, the pastor, yeah. you know, he basically, uh, he bodily escorted me like out of his church. He <laughs> took me literally like by the collar and uh, bodily escorted me because I was talking to somebody about the King James Bible. And mind you, his tracts say a Bible believing church, a Bible believing congregation, you know, and he preaches from nothing but the King James Bible. He, he uses it, he prefers it, but he doesn't believe it. Because every time he would get to the word hell in the King James Bible, he would say, or Hades, uh, or Hades, you know? And uh, there's no reason to go back to the Greek. Everybody hey, knows man. what the word hell, hell is, hell means, you know? Yeah. Everybody knows what hell, hell is speaking of, hell is talking about. So anyway, um, and before that, uh, the, the, uh, Pastor Jim Beckel Bali scored me out of the, you know, the church. Um, there was another incident where another brother in the Lord, Brother Dave Ruckos, they, the church was having a men's prayer breakfast. And I told the brother, I said, I really don't want to go because I know how these things turn out. They don't usually turn out, you know, that good. And uh, what happened was there was another brother there and, um, you know, he was excited about, like, you know, the, the King James Bible and stuff like that. And then... Um, Another brother, I think, had a, a perversion, didn't have the King James Bible. He had, like, uh, I don't know if it was an NASB or NIV. And then uh, somehow we got talking. I didn't bring it up. They brought it up about the Bible issue. And then I was showing the brother how his NIV was, or NASB was missing the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then there was a guy over there, one of the, the elders of the church or deacons or leaders of the church named Craig Hartman. And... Um, he heard us talking about the King James Bible, and then right away, like he got in the conversation, like he butted his nose in our conversation, and he said, you know, what are you guys talking about? Are you talking to him about the King James Bible, the King James Bible issue? And uh, I said, I wasn't the one who brought up, he brought up. He asked me a question, I just simply answered his question, you know? And then, basically, um, he, st he started telling me that I forbid you to talk about the King James Bible, you know. So he didn't really know who he was talking to because just like when I'm preaching on the street and when I'm preaching on the trains, the people are better off not saying anything than egging me on, you know what I'm saying? Because like, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to preach in the flesh and I don't want to be like spiteful or, 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 or revengeful, you know. The Bible says vengeance, you know, belongs to the Lord. You know, I will pay, say it the Lord. Well, anyway, um, and plus, the brother had invited me there, you know? Well, anyway, um, I knew this guy was a Bible corrector. I knew he was a King James Bible, you know, blockhead, like Dr. Ruckman says, or King James Bible agnostic, you know? And so basically, in front of, like, everybody at the men's prayer breakfast, including the pastor, I basically, I wouldn't shut up, you know, because, like, he was attacking the King James Bible, so I, I said out loud, I said, you know, Craig Hartman, I said, you're going to give an account, you know, to the Lord Jesus Christ, that the gentleman of Christ for being a Bible corrector, for correcting his word. I said, the Lord Jesus Christ said in John 12, 48, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, have one that judge of him. The word that I have spoken, Amen. the same shall judge him in the last day. Amen. And uh, these guys, they're not used to being rebuked. They're not, they used to be, you know, like, you know, like, you know the praise of men. Like Jesus says, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And these people aren't used to having somebody talk like that to them because they're used to, they used to be the one doing the rebuking. And basically, they, they, they set themselves on, on such high of a pedestal that nobody, that like they're beyond rebuke, you know. So anyway, um, I had to do that because, you know, they were attacking the King James Bible. They were attacking the living words of the living God, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, I believe the Lord backed me up 100% that day. And then another time in a church in uh, Manhattan, uh, some of you might know this church, uh, Heritage Baptist Church, Pastor Matthew Recker, if you ever heard the name. It's a famous uh, church in uh, New York City. Well, it's a Calvinistic uh, Baptist church. Well, the pastor there, he used nothing but the King James in his preaching and his teaching on the radio, you know. And uh, what happened was I met another guy, he invited me to this thing, they said they were having a, a, 
a thing about the King James Bible, about translations, and I told this guy, I said, I don't really want to go to these things, I don't know how these things wind up, you know? And then he invited me, and the pastor knows me, uh, Pastor Matthew Record, he knows me, he calls me like the pastor of the Chick Tracks, because of our ministry in the Times Square 42nd Street subway train station. So basically, he knew I was the pastor of King James Bible Baptist Church, and, you know, the way that they do things at that church is they have like, they, like they, split, they have like cell groups where they split people up and stuff like that. And so basically, the brother who invited me, he didn't want me, the pastor didn't want me sitting with him like, like on the, in the discussion, you know, because he knew where I was going to, you know, he, you know, you know how like the devil warns people not to take a gospel track? I say, you know, once you not to take a gospel track, well, the devil say also warns, you know, other, you know, non-Bible believing pastors about people like us, like what you call Ruckmanites, King James, Bible believers, you know, Bible believing Christian, King James Bible be be believers from cover to cover, including to cover. So anyway, um, to make a long story short, um, you know, the, the pastor uh, was um, talking about the different... Uh, translations, and I knew that he didn't really believe what he was saying. I knew because I've been trained by the Lord's Junker or dog, Dr. Peter S. Ruckman, how to spot a professional liar in the pulpit <laughs> or at the pulpit in a split second or a heartbeat, you know? Mm. And I don't say that you know, arrogantly or boastfully or proudly or pridefully, <clears throat> but, um, and plus I knew he went to Bob Jones University, which they don't believe the Bible. They have a great music department, you know, they have a great, you know, you know, worldly secular, you can get a great, you know, worldly secular education, you know, you know, learn a trade, occupation, profession. But when it comes to the Bible, teaching the Bible, or reverencing the Bible, honoring the Bible, or magnifying the King James Bible, loving the, that's not the place you go to learn the Bible. Neither is, you know, Pensacola Christian College and other, you know, cemeteries, you know. Amen, amen. But, um, so what happened was, um, people were asking questions, you know. And what Pastor Recker said was that, you know, the King James Bible, you know, is the best translation, you know, out of all the English, you know, translations, you know, which really isn't saying much, you know, it really doesn't say, it, that, that, that doesn't really do any justice, you know, to the Word of God, you know. So basically, I said to him, I said, well, I have a question for you, Pastor Recker. I said, which Bible, you know, do you believe is the most accurate, you know, to the Hebrew and the Greek, you know. Now, if he was honest, because of what he just said, he would have to say the King James Bible, right? He would have to say the King James, you know. Well, not to my surprise, because I knew it already, because, first of all, he's, you know, a Calvinist, and before the ESV came out, oh no, the ESV came out, had come out already, but it wasn't as popular as it is now. It's getting a lot of notoriety, popularity amongst Calvinists, you know. Well, anyway, he said the New American Standard, you know, and, you know, when he said that, you know, just confirmed what I've already been taught by Dr. Ruckman, that um, these people are professional liars. They use the King James Bible because that's where they're going to get their support from, you know, they're going to get their support from other King <clears throat> James Bible, believe Baptist pastor, preachers, church, and missionary schools, colleges, universities, cemeteries, you know, and um, the thing is, is that, uh, Basically, he lied. He lied to everyone in his church. You know, he, he lied. He lied to me because I was there. You know, and uh, the thing is, is that you know you can't trust even somebody 100% when they say something. You got you got to probe a little bit further. You got to ask a lot of questions. Just like I hear here in West Virginia that everybody says that they're saved. Everybody claims that they're yeah, saved. Yeah. Now, if you just take their word for it. And you don't probe a little further, you know, you might have lost an opportunity to lead a lost person to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Don't take it for granted everybody says they're saved. You know how many people who believe that you can lose your salvation think that Judas was saved? Judas Amen. Iscariot was saved? They use that as a proof text to say you can lose your salvation. Judas was never saved. Right. Judas was a devil. Right. Jesus said, have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil. Amen. So that's a poor example of trying to prove that somebody could lose their salvation. And then um, there's, another, uh, there's another church that um, we used to rent space from in Manhattan, and uh, he's on YouTube. 
the pastor, he's got a lot of, uh, you know, support. He's always asking for tithes and offerings. He's always asking for, you know, uh, for money, stuff like that. And um, what happened is, uh, inside his church, in one of his pulpits, he has like a giant NIV, you know? And people would never know that if you never came to like his church. It's actually... It's actually not like in the main uh, sanctuary. It's where you go up to like when you go up to like his office. And it's like a special. You got to enter like a special door, or side entrance. You know, so very few people would have access or they even know about that. So what I'm trying to tell you is that is that you know we need you need we need to hold fast to the form of sound words. You know, we need to hold fast to our King James Bible because the devil is saying he's trying to steal it from us, and because of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. You know, using men like Dr. Peter S. Ruckman and Dr. Sam Gipp and Dr. Gail Ripplinger, Sister Gail Ripplinger, and Dr. William Grady and Dr. Douglas Stauffer, and a lot of other great, you know, men and women of God who've, you know, told the line for the King James Bible. I don't believe anybody could ever destroy my faith no. in the Lord Jesus Christ or his written word, the King James Bible. Amen. And that's so important because, you know, I hope and pray that I never ever, you know, you know, straight from the Lord Jesus Christ, or wander from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Or, you know, get so backslidden where I don't have nothing to do with the Lord or the Word or church or the ministry or the Bible, or you know. But we never know what's, what's the, the future. We never know what you know, lies ahead or lies down the road. But I know one thing. I've had times in my 21 years of being saved where I have backslid, where I have got out of fellowship with the Lord and made a mess of things and did horrible things and. Things like Brother or John comes up here singing about that I'm ashamed of, embarrassed of, you know. But I tell you, it was the King James Bible. It was the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost also. But it was the King James Bible that really brought me back to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because I had, a, I had this word in me, this word was in me. That once the Lord is in you and the word is in you, you can't stray too far without coming back eventually. Uh, like I really believe that verse wholeheartedly. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old and not depart from it. And, um, you know, this King James Bible, it will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from the King James Bible. Yeah. And, you know, Psalm 119.11 says, <clears throat> Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's right. And the more you memorize the scriptures, you know, the more it keeps you from sinning against the Lord. And I just want to encourage you to fall in love, not only with the Lord Jesus Christ, but fall in love with his written word. King James Bible, and if you have a Bible-believing pastor, King James, don't, you know, don't take it for granted. If you have a Bible-believing church, don't take it for granted, because churches like this, right here, this is a, here, a far few in between. And really, it doesn't really matter the size of the church, because the Lord is able to save by many, the Lord is able to save by few. Wow. And the most important thing is the faithfulness of the doctrine that's being preached and being taught. So, there's a, there's a church, I don't know if you've ever heard of this pastor, his name is Pastor James Melton, Pastor James L. Melton, and um, he's in Sharon, Tennessee, and Martin, Tennessee, I've been there a few times, it's a storefront church, and I haven't been there in years, but when I, was, when I went there a couple of times, because I used to go to the Beale Street Blast, the street preaching blitz in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and um, they had less than 12 people, they had less than a dozen people, maybe they have more now, but I don't, I don't think they have much more. But anyway, that church, it's like one of the smallest churches, smallest King James only Bible being Baptist churches. But yet, they were doing like one of the greatest works on the earth for the Lord Jesus Christ. As far as like, the, the pastor has written like over a hundred like tracts and booklets and pamphlets and literature and brochure. You know, sound doctrine, you know, King James Bible defense material. And they have such a small church. So, a little as much if God is in a little as much. So don't get discouraged that, you know, there's a lot of empty, you know, pew seats, you know, chairs, pews here. Because, you know, the Lord the Lord is looking for a faithful few. You know, Amen. He wants to save everybody. Second Peter right, 3, 9. Right. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Mm -hmm. Some men count slackness, but as long suffering to us, we're not one to any surprise, but also repentance. And First Peter 2, 4, who have all men to be saved, according to knowledge of truth. And, 1 Timothy 2, 6, who gave himself a ransom for all, to testify in due time. But the Lord, you know, can use this small church to do a great work on earth for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, you know, faithfulness is the most important thing. You know, the Bible says a faithful man shall abound with blessings. That includes the women too. So, if you're faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ in the King James Bible, 
know, God declares you a successful Christian. Success isn't required in a Christian life, but faithfulness is. And it says, moreover, in stewards, it's required that man be found faithful. So don't get discouraged that, you know, not a lot of people turned out for, the, you know, for this, you know, 2017 rally, you know, back this, you know, country camp meeting. You know, it's not over yet. You know, we still got two more days. Um, and then you got up until Saturday, Sunday, but I'm, I'm sorry, my last day here is Thursday. The Lord can do, work a miracle, you know, Amen. at the last Amen. second, last, last minute, like he did with the thief on the cross. The main thing is that you're here. The main thing is that you have your heart Amen. right. Your heart is right with the Lord. You know, you're where you're supposed to be. And you have, we have to learn the Christian life to run our own race and to stay on track, not get off track. Because it's so easy to get off track. There's so many distractions. But in the Christian life, you know, also you got to learn to forget the past. Like the Apostle Paul, he said in Philippians 3.13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of high calling God in Christ Jesus. So let me show you a couple of scriptures here. Go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 8. I don't know how many uh, hours uh, uh, or hundreds of hours or thousands of hours I've spent literally copying down, you know, the Word of God. I haven't finished it yet to my shame, but um, years ago I started copying down the Bible and I have, you know, 22 books, you know, of the New Testament that copied out, you know, handwritten on index cards. and. Um, Noah Webster, he says the definition of memorize is to copy down by writing. And uh, what I like to do when I listen to a King James Bible and Baptist preacher or a King James Bible and preacher, what I like to do is whenever whatever verse they're, they're preaching from or teaching from or quoting, I like to always copy down the verse, copy down the King James Bible and write who the pastor was or the preacher was. It really helps me memorize the scripture, remember the scriptures. And I get more out of it, you know. And uh, you'd be surprised... Uh, how much of the scriptures you remember when you copy it down on index cards or a piece of paper, you know? And um, basically, that's how we got our Bible. You know, they, you know faithful men copied down the scriptures. Amen. And gave it to us, you know? But um, here in Ecclesiastes, my wife was like, why don't you just get yourself a notebook? And I used to use notebooks. I have a ton of notebooks. But I just find it's easier for me to memorize the scriptures when I write them on an index card. I don't know if it's psychological or a lot, but... Um, here in Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse number 4, the King James Bible says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? So we, we all know that our beloved King James Bible is truly under, under, under a king, that's King right. James. So that's just one proof for the King James Bible, you know, being the inspired, infallible, Aaron, perfect, or pure words of God. Amen. That, you know, the King James Bible itself <laughs> says, well, the word of the king is, there is power. And, who say, <clears throat> and um, you know, I just want to say something. I don't know if any of you have the Ruckman uh, reference, but I know some of you do. You know, when this Ruckman reference Bible first came out, you know, I was so happy that it came out because when I heard some of this was going to come out, I was praying that the devil, Satan, wouldn't stop it from coming to fruition. Because I know that the devil, Satan, is so mad. He couldn't stop the King James Bible from coming out in 1611, you know. But then to have a, a King James, you know, reference Bible, a King James study Bible, a King James defense Bible, that, you know, whose footnotes are only going to increase your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Whose footnotes are only going to increase your faith in the King James Bible. And whose margin, you know, reference is only going to increase your faith in the Lord Jesus. Whose margin reference will increase your faith. You know, you can't put a price on it. So I remember when it first came out, I forget how much it was, but now you can get um, uh, an economy edition, like almost like a, um, like a paperback for like $20, $25, you know. But um, I can't tell you, and I'm not saying this to bolster or to brag, but at one time our church was really well off, you know, financially. Our ministry was really well off financially. Myself was really off, well off financially. It's been a... It's been a while now since that, you know, it's been, we've really been struggling. But I can't tell you how many rough and reference Bibles I bought for people and got their name put on it because I, I, I want everybody to have what I have, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want lost souls to have what I have, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want them to be safe in hell like I'm safe. And I also want, you know, to build up Christians in their most holy faith. I want to see Christians, you know, have faith, you know, in the Lord Jesus, faith in His written. 
So I always try to go out of my way and, you know, even when I can't afford to do something like that, I still try to do it anyway. And I don't, I don't do it, you know, thinking that the Lord's going to bless me back. But that's how the Lord is. He always does it. He always blesses you when you go the extra mile from somebody, from Amen. someone. Like the Lord Jesus Christ says, give and it should be given unto you. One lesson I learned in my Christian life is that you can't outgive God That's and you can't outgive the brethren. You could never do enough good, you know, for the, you know, to the Lord Jesus Christ, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can never do enough good, you know, to the brethren, to your brethren. We're going to be in heaven forever together. Amen. You know, we need to get along down here on this earth. Amen. And, you know, Jesus says in John 13, 35, By this shall men know, ye my disciples, if ye have love one to another. And how we treat our brethren is a reflection of, of how much we love the Lord. You know, because if you can't love your brother who you see, how can you love God who you haven't seen? Amen. Amen. You know, I'm not going verbatim King James Bible, but I can turn there. Go to 1 John 4, 20. Go to 1 John 4, 20. And what really makes me mad is that we're all supposed to be on the same team for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're all supposed to be fighting the same cause, the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ, the cause of the King James Bible. I wish that there wasn't so much bickering in the body of Christ and, you know, backbiting, tailbreaking, slam whispering. I wish we could all get along, you know, because, you know, united we stand, you know, divided we fall, you know, right. when, especially when it comes to being Bible believers, King James Bible believers. I can understand, you know, People read about the perversions, but us King James Bibles, Ruckmanites, you know, King James Bible thumpers, you know, we should all be on the same, you know, one mind, one heart, one accord, you know. Right. That's right. <clears throat> Where did I tell you folks to go? First John. Oh yeah, go to First John four twenty. One thing that's lacking in the body of Christ is love, genuine love for the brethren. You know, fervent love for the brethren. Right. Amen. It really is lacking, and that's a shame. That's a real shame. That's not a good testimony, you know? And I'm guilty of it myself. I've been there, I've done that, and I, I hate when I'm like that. I hate when I'm moody and grumpy and irritable. You know, I want to be as charitable as possible. Charity is the greatest of gifts, according to 1 Corinthians 13. But here in 1 John 4, 20, the King James Bible says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Amen. And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. So we ought to love our brethren, you know, like we love God, like we love the Lord. If we say we love God, we don't love our brother, we're a liar, no. you know? Right. And, uh, you know, we ought not to be liars, you know? But um, <clears throat> I want to show you a, a scripture here. Go to John chapter 14, verse 23. I remember uh, when I was going to uh, Dr. Ruckman's uh, Bible School, Bible Institute, uh, PBI Pentecostal Bible Institute. I remember uh, in the bookstore they had this uh, super giant Bible. What it was, it was a Ruckman reference Bible. It was one of a kind, with every other page blank, and uh, it was the only one they ever made. And the reason why it was the only one they ever made was because, you know, it was very expensive, obviously, to make, and it was a it was it was a heavy price they were asking for it. But what I couldn't what I couldn't believe was that the thing sat there for like almost a year and nobody bought it. And to me, you know, I said to myself, it was about almost four hundred dollars, to be honest with you. But you know what? I remember when I was a child of the devil, I remember when I was a child of Satan, I remember when I was a backslidden Christian, when I was backsliding, backslidden, I would waste more money than that on sin. Never. So, you can't put a price on the Word of God. Amen. So, when the Lord blessed me with that $400, you know where I went? First place I went was the Bible Baptist Bookstore, Pensacola, Florida. I was living right at the time, I was living right across the street from the church, the school, the bookstore. I went and bought that Bible, and I, I was like a, a, a happy as a pig in a blanket. I was, you know, I, was so, uh, I was so elated because, you know, not only because that was the only... Uh, into the Ruckman Reference Bible, but because I just couldn't believe that, you know, I love God, I love, because He first loved me, I love the Lord Jesus Christ because He first loved me, and I know that there's all the Christians out there that love God just as much as me, if not more, just love the Lord Jesus Christ just as much as me, if not more, and I know there's other King James Bible fanatics like myself out there who love the King James Bible just as much as me, if not more, 
And I just couldn't believe they didn't buy that. And they, this, this King James Bible being Christians that have more money than myself, I mean, that to me, on one, on one way, I couldn't afford it financially, but spiritually, I couldn't afford not to have it spiritually. <laughs> right. Because, uh, you know, it's the Word of God, you know, and just to have. Uh, I would have paid four dollars, even if it didn't have Dr. Ruckman's, uh, you know, footnotes or cross references or margin notes or appendices. It's just that it's the Word of God. It's it, this King James Bible. It's God's love letter to us. Amen. You know, and not so long ago, um, there's another great Bible that's out there. I don't know if you've ever heard of it before. It actually, it actually came out before Dr. Ruckman's uh, reference Bible, and it's actually the reason why Dr. Ruckman's reference Bible had to come out because basically, you know. The brother got the majority of his stuff from Dr. Ruckman, but he didn't acknowledge him in like the first edition. So basically, when you would read, his name is uh, Pastor Hoffman. He's the pastor. Uh, uh, he passed two different churches in Indiana. I just met him uh, last month at Beale Street, the Beale Street Blast Memphis Tennessee. Well, anyway, um, he's another great man of God. But um, when you would read his Bible before the Ruckman reference Bible came out, it would be like reading Dr. Ruckman's notes. Now, when you have his Ruckman reference Bible, and um, what, I forgot why, why I was going. Oh, the reason why I'm going, going there is because on Facebook, you know, there's a, there was a brother named Bruce. I forget his last name. Well, anyway, he put a post on there that he had a, the name of the Bible, he calls it Common Man's Reference Bible. But it's purewordsoftruth.org if you want to look it up. I consider the Ruckman Reference Bible and the Common Man's Reference the two best KJV defense, you know, the study reference. So what happened was, uh, this brother named Bruce on Facebook put a post that he's got a common man's reference Bible, Interleaf, just like the Ruckman reference of Interleaf. And he, uh, he was asking if anybody was interested in buying it. So I got, again, you know, it's the Word of God, but also <laughs> it's because it's got like great footnotes, great cross references that will increase my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, will increase my faith in the King James Bible. So to me, stuff like that, it's not a luxury. It's a necessity. 